Okay, we have this new term molten coming in, and I'd like to take a little bit of time to show why that's the case. Let's say you have a sodium and iodine factory, and you've got a source of sodium iodide. You pick up uh, iodide salts from the ocean or from a cave or someplace. So you've got an aqueous solution that's full of sodium ions and, whoops, sorry, iodide. Capital I is what I meant to write. Iodide ions. And you think, I'll pass an electric current through this, I'll get sodium metal, which is not real useful, but you can sell it, and iodine, which is a few industrial uses, and it's a disinfectant in medicine, so that's good stuff. Let's do this and make some pure elements. What happens when you try to hook this thing up? Water, sodium, and iodine. Let's clean up our data book. If our reactants are water, sodium ions, and iodide ions, you're probably way ahead of me here, so I'll do this fast. If you read down your left side, looking for a reactant, down here is sodium ion waiting to be found as the strongest oxidizer, but if you read down the left side, this is iodine, not I minus, so we can't use that. You make your way down and you find, uh-oh, water. Water is our strongest oxidizer. So that's a problem. That means our sodium is not going to reduce. Okay, well maybe we'll forget the sodium side of our company and we'll just be an iodine company. If we read up this side, we don't have sodium metal, we can't use that. Reading up, reading up, reading up. Uh, here's our iodine. So actually this part does work out. Up here was water lurking. I thought the water might come up before iodine, but iodine's actually a relatively good reducing agent, so you'd at least get this part. You'd get a water iodine reaction. So if you do this with water, you get a water reaction that produces hydrogen gas, and then you get your iodine reaction. So one out of two, not terrific. What if you want the sodium and the iodine? What if one out of two is not good enough for you and you want the sodium and the iodine? Well, you have to find a way to do this reaction without water. So that's okay. You can take the solution, put it on a hot plate, and just heat it until all the water evaporates off, and then you're left with solid white crystals of sodium iodide. The trouble is sodium, or solid crystals like this, don't conduct very well. They aren't very conductive of electricity, and they're not fluid, which means it's hard for products to move through them. You can't have bubbles rising or precipitate sinking as readily as you would in a liquid. So what you do in a case like this is you take your sodium iodide crystals and you actually heat them up until they melt. And that's what we mean by molten sodium iodide. We mean we've heated this not only until the water's driven off, but until it turns liquid. And now we have something that's fluid and ions can move through it and we can create a cell with it. All your materials have to be very heat resistant, but it's still worth doing. And now, if we hook this up in a cell and go to our redox table, and the water's gone, Goodbye, water. We boiled you off into steam. You're not in our system anymore. Now if you read down and up your redox table, the first oxidizing agent you find is going to be your sodium. The first reducing agent you find will still be your iodide ions. Now we're set. Now we can have a sodium and iodine business like we always dreamed of. Now we'll have a reaction with sodium picking up electrons and turning into sodium metal. And we'll have another reaction where iodide ions are turning into iodine and giving up electrons. We'll double this. And so our net reaction where we throw out the electrons and just write what's left, will be 2-sodium reacts with 2-iodine, or 2-iodide ions, sorry. 
you'll get two met atoms of sodium metal and an iodine molecule. And they don't ask for voltages here, I guess. Okay. Now they do ask which of these reactions happens at the cathode and which one at the anode. The quick way to do that, I would say, which one of these is the reduction and which is the oxidation? Here we have sodium plus one turning into sodium zero. That's a reduction. Reduction has a C in it and so does cathode. That's literally what goes through my head when I have to figure one of those out. I don't have any slicker method or anything memorized. It's that series of relationships works every time. For this other one, it has to be the anode just by elimination, but pretend you don't know that. Negative going up to zero is oxidation. I guess I do have that part memorized. Oxidation has an A in it just like anode. So the cathode reaction is where you'll get sodium depositing, and at the anode you'll get iodide ions converting into iodine. Fair enough. Okay, let's see what this next one is. Calcium phosphide would be uh, Ca3P2. But if you melt it, I guess more importantly, you'll get calcium ions and phosphide ions, which are P3 minus. I can't remember seeing phosphorus in the redox table pretty much at all. So this is a little odd, but let's see if we can track it down. Maybe I just haven't been noticing it. Calcium and phosphide. Calcium and phosphide. Just looking for capital P's pretty much. There's lead, there's lead again. Well, there's our calcium. Okay. And how about our phosphorus? Is it anywhere in here? I guess since we don't need a cell voltage, they aren't asking for one, it we can still muddle our way through this even if we can't find phosphorus. Yeah, there's no phosphorus in here. So one of our reactions is the reduction of calcium. Plus two electrons converts to calcium metal. The other one would be phosphorus. And if it's going to turn into elemental phosphorus is normally P4, or that's the simplest form of it. And if there's four of those, we need four phosphorus ions on this, or phosphide ions on this side. That makes the charge minus 12 over here, so we need 12 electrons on this side. Both of these reactions should have 12 electrons, so I have to go times six on the calcium reaction. Six times as much, six times as much, six times as much. Okay, so our net reaction then should be six calcium plus four phosphide turns into six calcium metal and a single P4 molecule. I scrapped the electrons because they're spectators essentially. Okay, so it, I'm a little bugged that this wasn't on the redox table, but it didn't need to be. We can we can tell that it's... We know from the periodic table that the phosphide ion is minus 3, and we know it has to get up to 0. You have to have memorized that phosphorus forms four atom molecules, which is a little unusual, but no big thing. And which is our cathode and which is our anode? Here we have calcium 2 increasing to calcium 0. That is a, re sorry, reducing to 0. Geez, plus 2 down to 0 is a reduction. Reduction happens at the cathode. Cut down at the cathode. 
This reaction is minus 3 going up to 0. That is an oxidation. Oxidation has an A in it, just like anode.